Zero fossil fuel back. I uh, just wanted to show you the top of the cell. I've been running for about two minutes at an amp and a half, actually probably closer to five minutes. And this is where we are. This is the this is looking down into the top of the electrolyzer tank. I apologize for my shaky hand, but this uh, USB cam is not the greatest. And I'm not going to bother refocusing because it's a little bit better from a distance. But you can see that pretty clearly. We have uh, pretty good surface tension. The bubbles are getting fairly large. And a lot of foam has uh, built up along the edges. Also notice the, uh, the discharge tube that I've, that I've uh, attached to the side of the tank has a tube inside the tank which actually brings the inlet to the very center of the tank at the top. This way as I'm driving along and the liquid inside the electrolyte is sloshing from side to side it always sloshes around the opening and nothing ever gets into the discharge tube itself. Actually works pretty good. Uh, I see just a little bit of the brown scum beginning to form but not nearly as bad as it was before. So I'm hopeful that it was a, a one-time event and also with the higher current now you can if I can hold this steady enough you can see that my uh, my gas generation has become much more evenly distributed. I think if I let this cell run long enough at this current level that it will eventually um, equalize all the way across. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty certain that it will. Uh, without touching the voltage, I'm I've just creeped up to 1.6 amps, 1.66 amps. And I presume that is because the electrolyte is beginning to warm up just a little bit. Can't really visualize the gas rising off, but I am going to put. No, I'm not going to put the cover on. Uh, I had a. Uh, I have to make a modification to the cover. I need to add a piece of acrylic to the bottom side of the cover that is a little bit smaller than the edge of the cover itself. This morning I tried putting the just for grins and giggles as I was precharging it in my car at 12 volts off the cigarette letter I decided to bring in the vacuum hose from the intake manifold and attach it to the outlet tube figured what the heck let's see what it does under a vacuum well that was a bad idea because what had happened was I had when I when I started the car the vacuum actually took the long sides of the electrolyte tank and sucked them inward almost three quarters of an inch I was when I when I looked inside the windshield and saw it bending that far I immediately shut the car off and it immediately returned back to normal. So what I need to do is I need to make the top cover a little bit like a cookie jar lid so that a piece of acrylic actually sits down inside the tank to shore up the edges of the walls. Uh, the final version of this electrolyte cell will be 3 eighths of an inch acrylic not one quarter. I guarantee you that. Um, the other thing the uh, answer to the last video's riddle, why does a taller fireplace flue pipe work better than a shorter one, is because the taller the pipe, the higher the gas velocity you get going up the pipe and the better draft it creates inside the hearth of the fireplace itself. One of the, one of the objects that we're after in creating a very efficient working cell is to get the fluid up through the, the the plate cavity out and over and create a circulating current as fast as we can get it in there. The ultimate obviously is to pump it but if you can create enough of a current without pumping then why bother? Um, I'm going to be backing down the voltage here. It started to creep up even a little more. I was at a 1.8 amps. It's sort of running out of control here a little bit. So but look at, look at the size of those bubbles. Isn't that great? That is very high surface tension on the water. Uh, anyway, I would like to make a proposal to uh, those of you experimenters out there and uh, those at overunity.com to create a second S cell with exactly the same plate surface area as this one. Only instead of trying to recreate a wet cell, try to recreate a chimney stack. And by that, what I mean is make the cell only, don't make it uh, 
two-sided. Make it one-sided, but make it twice as tall. That way you can submerge the whole thing in the electrolyte fluid, and even with it completely submerged, the amount of surface area that you've covered at the edge of the plate where you could potentially create leakage is still the same. When you, when you spread out sideways and you submerge it, you, you increase the surface area by two, but you also increase the leakage by two. And you don't do anything to increase the flow velocity coming up through the, through the electrolyte plates. I believe that two S cells with exactly the same plate surface area, only one organized horizontally like the first one that we've built, and the second one taller than it is wide, twice as tall as it is wide, all things being equal, I believe the tall one will produce considerably more gas than the horizontal one. Uh, that is my conjecture, and I, I put it as a challenge to the community to follow along with me and build a vertical model of the same cell and conduct a side-by-side -side comparison of the gas volume being created. I think it's not a mistake that MagDrive chose to create a vertical cylinder. I think it's not a mistake that uh, the Joe cell is more vertical than it is horizontal. Quite certain that the flow coming up through the stack is the reason why. One thing I do not have and I wish I had is a thermometer. I need to pick up an electronic thermometer to monitor the temperature of the electrolyte solution here. But anyway, that's it for now. We're generating gas. I'm enjoying this. Um, I'm going to let this run for a while, probably back off, let it cool down, start it up again, and um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get courageous and hold a, uh, a butane grill lighter to it, see what happens. <laughs> We've been running for about 45 minutes to an hour at uh, roughly one and two thirds amps. Get an idea of the activity that we've got going on here. These bubbles are almost exclusively coming out of solution between the plates, starting at a position of about halfway up the plates. You can see where the, where the cloudiness begins. Um, this is the dark brown scum I was telling you about. Doesn't that look delicious? And evidently it has not stopped. So I will try, I think, the next time also using distilled water with just a touch of the baking soda in the elect to, to create the electrolyte and see if this condition recurs. If it does, then I'm going to have to assume that it's a condition associated with the with the baking soda and not the minerals in the water that I happen to use. But I'm guessing minerals right now. Real quickly, there's the, there's the cover with the pieces of Lexan that are glued to the cover. I don't know how well you can see that, that form like a cookie jar. Hopefully it'll be enough to shore up the sides of the electrolyte tank so that it doesn't cave in on itself when I attach it to the vacuum of my automobile. Speaking of which, I have to cut it short now and get to work on that automobile. I have leaking fuel injectors that are uh, leaking raw fuel over the intake manifold, so I have to replace the O-ring kits and those. If you'll excuse me, I uh, have duties to attend to. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out. Hope you are enjoying the series.